If you're like me, you have all sorts of cables laying around and all sorts of devices that use those cables. What do they mean? Why is it that devices are changing to new types of cables? Old ones seem to work absolutely fine. Today we're going to take a look at USB. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. There is one thing that is extremely complex that I'm going to try and cover in one take. Let's see if I can do this. We're going to talk about USB because there's a lot of misconceptions about USB, about how fast it can go, what it can charge. Just because a port looks like a port doesn't mean it's the same as another port. It's true. You're going to find that out in just a minute. I have a whole assortment of stuff here because... I collect USB everything because it's such a versatile format that it's just one of those things. If you don't have the correct USB cable, um, you can't do very much. So by having a variety of different cables and different formats, I can pretty much tackle almost any job I need to. Let's take a look and see what I got. All right, guys, I have a layout here of USB everything. Everything that I pretty much had on my computer desk in the shop. And you're going to kind of see a trend here. It's going to go from the slowest, generally up to the fastest. And the reason I have them laid out like that is because there is a history, 20 some years worth of history here, maybe 30 years worth of history. We're going to talk about some of that because there is a lot of changes that have happened over the years to USB and because of those changes it's gotten faster you're able to communicate with more types of devices we actually use USB for generic things like even this flashlight right here see that we're going to talk about that in a minute because that is an old style port and it's not the best type of port so what do I mean guys let's go ahead and take a look at the revision history of USB in general and if we start out, we're gonna come way down here and you see these square funky connectors. You see one right there. Well, at the top of this chart, you can see that it says at 1995, they created USB 1.0. And USB 1.0, it was revolutionary because it allowed your computer to talk to multiple types of devices using serial data. Now, serial ports have been around computers since the 1980s. But the thing is, is we found a way to make it faster and to make it more universal because a, a serial cable that connects a computer to a device, that was pretty standard, but it's extremely slow. And the way serial works is there's generally a clock pulse and then there's a data pulse along with a uh, neutral bias or a ground, okay? So you have a data pulse and you have, uh, well, it's a TX and an RX. And then you have power and then ground, okay? So that's basically how they designed USB. And you can see over here, USB 1.0 plug right there. The one that we all know has four pins. And the thing about USB 1.0 is that it was polarized, which means the plug only goes in one way. And if you're like me, you always put it in the wrong way the first time, right? And then you're going to get some Yahoo out there that crams the device in the port and breaks the port. The plastic piece that's in the middle, it's technically kind of fragile and it will snap right here where the, um, the metal case ends. It happens all the time on medical devices. It will break. But USB has been a standard for 30 years. This connector right here, since 1995 that is technically a USB 1.0 format all right even though they made it faster you can see USB 2.0 in year 2000 it came up from 1.5 megabits per second to 12 megabits per second that was astronomically fast at the time and you can see we got it all the way up to 480 megabits per second 
and its theoretical top speed is 60 megabytes per second. I have not seen uh, USB 2.0 ever go that fast. USB 3.0, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but USB 3.0 usually can't even match that speed uh, depending on the device. So in 2008, they came out with USB 3.0, and USB 3.0, it changed the game. Okay, you can see what our theoretical speed was right there, 480 megabits per second to five gigabits per second at its slowest, okay? Now, as you change the format, you have to change the connector. So what I want people to understand is that when I talk about USB 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, it does not relate to the connector, not directly, because you can have USB A that has a 3.0 connector. We'll cover that in just a minute, all right? So uh, USB A, it can go USB 2.0, whatever. So its speed might be different, but the format's the same. So here you can see I've got USB A, there's USB B or a D style connector. The micro connector, which is infamous. We see that device like on that, uh, so that uh, flashlight right there. That is a USB micro, and it was infamous. It's on all sorts of cheap devices. These are the most delicate out of all the USB ports, and I absolutely hate them. I don't know why. I'm so glad that we got rid of these stupid things because you have to put it in the right way. People, uh, this little port that's on the circuit board is always fragile. It's always fragile. It always gets hairline fractures, even from even slight wiggling of the cord. Horrible, horrible format but it was dominant for over a decade. So they tried to change some things up. When they got with USB 3.0, right around this early 2000s era, they kind of did a Band-Aid fix. So they took a USB B micro, and what they did is they added some extra pins to it. So it was like two of those stuck together, and they used it for a lot of like external hard drives, some printers, and a few other things hate this port. It suffers from a lot of the same problems as this. There's some lateral stability because it's a wider connector, but at the same time, it takes more real estate because it's a wider connector. This right here, it was a Band-Aid, all right? And then with USB 3.1, which now we're on 3.2, we have USB-C. You're gonna see this one so much more common. And then there's gonna be Thunderbolt, which you see this little lightning next to like the port on your laptop. That means it's technically a probably U, uh, Thunderbolt 3 connector. We'll talk about Thunderbolt in a minute. It's a interesting standard that a lot of people don't understand. But USB-C is technically one of the fastest cables and they are still developing for this one as far as like making it faster and faster. You see over here, we uh, actually went from five gigs to 10 gigs, all the way up to 40 gigs. Now this was technically standardized just a couple years ago, 2019 USB 4.0. We have not seen it yet in the market because there has to be a lot of cooperation across the industry in order to release a USB standard. So over the next couple years, we are gonna be seeing 20 to 40 gigabits per second, which is crazy fast, guys, crazy fast. Of course, you know, 12 gigabits per second was crazy fast just a few years ago, but 40 gigabits per second, USB 4.0, it's going to use the USB-C connector. So C is the connector, USB 4.0 is the data standard, okay? And when you make it faster, some of the things that you have to take into account is the integrity of the data from point to point. So there are certain lengths that you can maximize on USB. And if I remember correctly, it used to be we could maximize it like 16 foot. So 16 feet and then you'd have to get a booster because at 16 feet you have some degradation and some attenuation of, of the signal. So what you normally seen was like a one millivolt pulse, you know, over 16 feet, it might be 0.8 or 0.7 of a volt, you know, or of a millivolt. So, Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the cables. Now that you understand the standard and the fact that the connectors have morphed, the modern most connectors are USB-C. Thunderbolt uses USB-C. They're technically the same, but a Thunderbolt cable has some extra feature sets. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? So, 
let's go ahead and come on over here. I'll show you a couple more things. So USB uh, A, there was four pins, as I said. Then they came out with a faster version, which was with the 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, which is blue. And inside the blue, there are more pins. It's not just four. There's nine pins. And you can't really see the other ones. They're very hard to see. They're in the back. So you can see the four prominent ones right there. And if you tilt it a little bit, you'll notice a bunch of extra pins in the back. I'll see if I can throw up an image to make it clear for you. So they moved from the D style to also a bulkier and really annoying style that they use on printers. It actually is way faster, can carry more data, but it's way bulkier. You can see uh, they added like a bump on the top. This you'll almost only find in printers because it's a large device. It's got a lot of real estate for a port and they're very durable. The D style connectors are very durable, which is why an external device like a printer it's ideal for, all right? Because you got a lot of surface area to put a port someplace, and it's also very durable because a lot of things move around printers like people. And every time you bump that cord, you could be damaging the uh, port itself, you know? So here's one of the important things that we'll talk about for USB-C. Not only can it go faster, it's bi-directional which means uh, you can plug it in this way, you can flip the cord around, plug it in that way. It doesn't really matter, but it's technically also bi-directional for data. And that means that any device that's plugged into a USB-C can be the host. Now with a normal device, you have your computer and then you have your uh, attached device. The computer is always gonna be the host and the device is always gonna be the slave and it's going to basically control the external device. The external device almost never controls the, the master. It, it just doesn't happen. Normal USBs are all the slave devices. The computer turns into the master. With USB-C, which we can see with this brilliant little cable right here, I can connect my phone into anything, even a computer, and technically the phone can be used to control the computer absolutely unheard of. Now, when I just got a new Samsung tablet, I plugged my phone into the tablet using one of these and it pulled all the data from my phone into the tablet. So it's a bi-directional host, which means either end of the cable can be the host, which changed the game for USB. Because that means that any device, like I could plug this meter into a computer or a printer, and the meter could technically control the computer, you know? So if I change a setting on here, it would change it on the computer as well. In normal USB, you would have to have like an interface on the computer, when you change a setting on there, it then configures your end device. Now with medical equipment, that makes an amazing opportunity. We haven't even really touched on that yet, in the equipment zone, but having the fact that your end device could be the host is gonna change things. It really will. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the different cables I have set out here because like I said, they're kind of set out in the slowest to the fastest, all right? And if I get some of this stuff wrong, guys, please give me a, give me a break, man. <laughs> I'm doing this in one take, all right? And this is just based on what I know about USB because I have been around the block in the computer world for 40, 30 some years, <laughs> something like that, since I was 13 years old, which is like 1993. Um, so anyway, guys, we start out right over here and I have a USB mini, all right? So you can see this little uh, weird shape. Now this one is fading out, but you're still gonna see this on some devices, especially if they need to charge. If you find one of these cables, save it. There's nothing worse than not having this cable and then you have to connect to some older medical device to configure it or something. If you find one of those cables, save it. Now this one is way more prominent, unfortunately, because as I said, this is the weakest of all the USB ports. This is the micro. And these ones were on cell phones, all sorts of stuff. And the thing is, is the data rate was slow on these ones compared to USB-C. So a lot of people were complaining because 
they liked these ones and I don't I don't get that they were very delicate they break all the time I mean look at this this little blade that comes out at the end right there that blade gets bent on so many devices and you can see what they added is some little catch paws on the bottom to retain it into the port now those also will wear out and this guy will just fall out of the port and then it starts getting damaged as it starts pulling out ah, these things just have problems okay so that brings me to this interesting guy now this is a USB-C right here connected to a USB-A and this would be a USB-A 1.0 or 2.0 let's say I have this drive right here this is a solid state drive you see it has a USB-C port I can run it off this cable which I did earlier today but as I said, there's a couple complications with the USB 1.0. The USB-A is capable of handling 7.5 watts of power, which might not be enough wattage to power your USB-C devices. You can see over here, I got some other ones. We'll talk about those in a minute. They might require more power. And this guy here, theoretically, is designed to handle 7.5 watts. Now, USB-C right here, which you see, that one says Nintendo, USB-C port is designed to handle 100 watts. How crazy is that? So we can handle, let's see, what did I say it was? I said USB-C, uh, well actually USB 3.0, which includes USB-C, can handle 20 volts at 5 amps. 5 amps. Now, now you understand why modern day cell phones are using uh, the USB-C. It's because they can charge faster. That's one of the major advantages. Take a look at this guy over here. This is a USB-C charger. It puts out like three and a half amps, okay? Three and a half amps. You can see it's hardwired into the plug, but it is a USB-C. Now, USB-C is a standard, okay? So anything that plugs into a USB-C, it has to have a certain amount of amperage and a certain voltage because technically you can plug that into any device and blow it up. So that's why they have these things called standards. Well, here you can see I have a USB-A charger. This one here puts out five volts at one amp. It will not kick out more than one amp because the USB-A standard is limiting the amount of amps that it can kick out along with the amount of voltage. So here is a USB-A. This one here puts out 1.5 amps of five volt. Now it's only gonna put out five volt. USB-C can kick out 15 volts or 20 volts 20 volts at 5 amps 20 volts at 5 amps now this guy here puts out like 15 volts or something like that um, that is a nintendo charger but that is a very important feature set of usb-c versus the usb-a so if you got a device that comes with a usb-c cable and you plug it into a usb-a like this with this type of cable you are not gonna get the fast charging rate. You are gonna get a much slower charging rate because you're kicking out five volts at one, one amp, something like that. Extremely low power on the old style connector. So if you have a USB-C type of charger, use a USB-C to C cable only, and you will get way faster charge rate and data rates, way faster. So guys, let's go ahead and go on into a couple of these other cables here. You can see this one here is also a USB-A to USB-C, which just like this one, that means that it will transfer data and it will charge things, but it will not do it quickly. So here we have a general speed increase in USB devices, okay? So let's start out. I have a micro SD card right here. And this micro SD, go ahead and turn it. This micro SD has a one. You see a tiny little one in a U? That means that this guy is technically very slow. I don't care if it says SanDisk Ultra or whatever. This one here, see how it has a little U right there with a three? That means that these are the fastest cards. This one here is probably a USB 2.0 rate. So even though I have something like this, card reader right here which is a USB 3.0 standard 
this guy here will not read that fast regardless because of that one. And I could do a whole nother video on, on cards because this is pretty important. You can see this card right here is a three. This is a, actually a, a little bit faster card than that one. We have regular USB 2.0 devices and these are very generic. You find these ones in like trade shows and stuff. And as we go up, they are also going to change the color of the mouth. So this one here is technically faster than this one. This is a very cheap product. It's, it's similar to this on the inside. So it's very generic and it's very slow. Probably also it's only like two to four gigs. Here I have an eight gig. And as they go up in size, generally they're gonna get faster because in order to transfer 256 gigs like this one here on a 2.0 bus, it is gonna be so slow. You're talking 15, 30 minutes or so, all right? But at 3.0 speeds, which I know it's 3.0 because it's blue, and if you look inside it, you'll see the extra pins. This guy here is actually very fast. It can also get kind of warm, but it's very fast. Some of these intermediary ones, like this guy here, it's red. Don't be deceived. That red is still only four pins. While it is faster than these two, it is still only USB 2.0 theoretical. So it is still technically way slower than any of these devices. And that brings us to the end of this. Why would we switch to USB-C or USB 3.0? Well, let's see. Starting with this guy, I have a 256 gig. This one here is, yeah, that's a 256 gig. This is an MSATA card, which is larger than these NVMe M.2s. Um, that is the standard. So MSATA to USB-C. This one here is an NVMe or M.2 reader to USB-C. The reason that we want to only use, we, we don't want to use these cables. We only generally want to use either a 3.0 cable, which is one like this. So it's going to be blue and it's got the extra pins or a USB-C only cable. Get these ones the heck out of there because these ones also pull more power. So I told you guys about power requirements and how USB 2.0 and 1.0 don't pull as much power. They don't provide as much power. These guys here can pull way more power because these guys are just kicking it. They are moving so fast. So that, that's a whole nother thing, man. I could do a whole nother video on how to get really fast external storage. They got these little drives, these converters right here. You can buy these off Amazon and they're actually pretty cheap, only like 20, maybe $30. And even when you're turning in old computers, you can get like this here is a 256 gig. I got it out of an old computer that was getting thrown out. This one here was an extra from a computer that was broke. It was a laptop. This is a 500 gig NVMe M.2 is the format. NVMe is the technology in it. So this guy here is faster than M SATA. And this guy here is just a regular M.2, uh, but they're powered with USB-C and it's theoretically incredibly fast. So this cover here fits on there. You got a USB-C cable, plugs into your computer, crazy fast and very reasonably priced. You're gonna find 256 to 500 gigabyte uh, cards all over on computers for the last five or six years do not throw them out. You can save them and for just $30, you can turn it into an external thumb drive like this one right here that is way faster, way faster than any of these, way faster. These things are crazy fast compared to any USB thumb drive. And because it's got more surface area, it can dissipate more heat and it technically will probably last longer than any thumb drive. And think how durable that guy is. If I damage the port right here, all I gotta do is pop this guy out take that card out and slap it into a new drive that I bought off Amazon. And you can go ahead and save your data. So even if you damage the port on this, it's good. You damage the port on these, you better have really good soldering skills because that could be the end of your data. All right. So that's another good thing about these. Not only are you reusing old, 
older technology that's way faster than USB thumb drives, but it makes it so that if you damage it, you can save your data by pulling the card out, slapping it in another one, and pressing on. But guys, that is probably a long-winded thing on USB. I did that all in one take. I still cannot believe it. I could spend hours talking about USB. And one of the things I just want you to take away is that if a device has USB-C, only power it with a USB-C to C cable or only power it with a USB 3.0 or 3.1 or 2 to C. If it's blue to C, like this guy right here, it's okay. If it's one of these other cables that are all over the market, like this one right here, see how it's got white four pins only to a C? Get that the hell out of here. It cannot handle the power and the data transmission speeds. You can use it in a pinch, but when it comes to actually getting the performance and not damaging the product, get those out of here. Only use the more advanced newer connectors for all your newer USB-C that includes these guys right here, okay? These type of chargers, while they are good, that's fantastic, they do not put out the amps of a standard USB-C type of charger. So if a device comes with a USB-C, use its charger because it puts out more amps and more voltage. Like this guy here puts out 15 and a half volts at X amount of amps. Those guys only put out five volts. So it's not the same, all right guys? Just because you got little cables that can adapt doesn't mean it's the same. Use the proper charger that came with your device and you'll get faster speeds and longer life, okay? <sighs> Anyway, guys, I know that that is an absolute long video, but guys, there is so much to talk about when it comes to USB, and there's so many intricacies. I know I probably missed a hell of a lot of detail in this, but think about it, guys. There is so much to talk about on this. There's no way I could cover it in one video, and there's no need to, because as I say in my other videos, if there's anything you don't understand, research it further on your own, and you will get a much cleaner picture than what I could ever give as a teacher, okay? Thanks for watching, guys.